In this lab station, we're going to talk about the common goat diseases. There will be several slides that we're going to go over many of the different health issues and other prevention and treatment strategies that we have for common goat diseases. So there's three primary learning objectives that you should take away from this station. The first one, which we've already stated, is listing the common small ruminant health issues. At the end of the station, you should be able to list those. You should be able to describe ways we can prevent these diseases, as well as various treatment strategies we can use in the prevention and treatment of the diseases. Finally, the third major objective you should be able to do is learn the ways we can diagnose health issues from various symptoms of the animal and also different management strategies we can use to help inform us of the diseases. So today we're going to talk about four main sources and different examples for each of these sources that result in disease. So the first one we're going to discuss is metabolic demands of production, and we see this across all different species, but today we're really going to focus on milk fever, otherwise known as hypocalcemia in goats. We're going to talk about parasitism in terms of coccidiosis, which is one example of a parasite um, that's able to cause disease. We'll talk about various pathogens, but specifically a bacterial pathogen um, that results in pneumonia. And then we'll also talk about how environmental stressors, such as transport, exposure to extreme weather, can also result in various diseases. For example, today we'll talk about ringworm. So let's talk about metabolic disorders with animals. We see hypocalcemia or milk fever uh, quite frequently in goats right around the time um, that they undergo parturition or kidding. So some symptoms of an animal that may, be in, that may be coming down with this metabolic disorder, oftentimes these goats will have a very tired appearance. Uh, they just won't look quite right. They look dull. Um, they might not be, be behaving the same as the other animals um, within the herd. We see their milk production go lower, so they might not be able to feed their offspring like they should be doing. They won't be eating as much, which subsequently leads to lower milk production. And in very, very severe cases of milk fever, we'll actually witness tremors with these animals to the point where sometimes they're not able to stand up. So when are you most likely to get it? Really any doe right after kidding. So during this time, the doe goes through the kidding process. She has the kids, and then we see her immediately start to produce milk. So milk production is a huge strain of blood calcium, and it gets this blood calcium from, from the bloodstream. So during these time periods, if the animal's not able to keep up with calcium in the blood, we see a draining of the calcium, and the result of this calcium deficiency are these signs that we're seeing, such as tremors um, and overall loss, loss of appetite appetite and lower milk production. So what do you do when an animal is diagnosed with milk fever or is showing signs of milk fever? So the easiest treatment that we give goats is either oral or IV treatment of calcium solution. So the, your number one priority is to be able to try to get calcium back into the bloodstream so you can help relieve some of those symptoms that the animal is experiencing. We can also work on a prevention strategy because if we can prevent milk fever from occurring, then we never have to get to the point where we actually have to treat it. So we really utilize nutrition and carefully balancing our mineral within the diet or the ration for the animal in late gestation as well as during her early lactation period. We're going to start today by talking about parasites. So we know that we can treat parasites by administering an anthelmintic. So you may have heard of ivermectin before, and we're able to provide supportive therapy to an animal if they come down with a parasite. Now, goats are very predominant at getting parasites compared to some of our other species, and we're going to go over very quickly what the life cycle of the parasite is. So if you have a goat that's out on pasture, the goat's going to go ahead, it's going to eat the grass or whatever is available to it. So then the parasite, which lives on the grass, is going to be consumed or ingested by the goat. It'll enter into the stomach where adult worms are going to mate of those parasites and then they're going to lay, the females will then lay eggs. These eggs are then passed into the intestines of the goat and then they're, they exit the goat um, in the feces. So we see these eggs in the feces, they lay are laid out onto the ground, the eggs hatch. We see a stage of infective stage where the animals are able to, or these parasites are able to infect the animal. And then we see this cycle continue as the goat, another goat comes along, it eats the grass that is contaminated by this parasite, and then we see the cycle, um, the life cycle, the parasite continue on. So the best way that we can prevent uh, parasites from infecting our animals is to reduce fecal to oral contact since the fecal um, feces are a huge source of these eggs. And we also routinely will rotate pastures. So we have animals that will spend some time on a particular pasture where they will um, have time away from pasture that's been with other animals. So we can try to break the cycle of the uh, parasite laying the egg and then hatching and then relaying the egg. 
So one example of a parasite that we commonly see with goats is called coccidiosis. Coccidiosis is a protozoan parasite, and unfortunately, normal dewormers that we traditionally use for goats is not able to prevent or cure an animal that has contracted this par parasite. So you know your goats potentially may have coccidiosis, or you should be concerned if you start to notice severe diarrhea, and diarrhea often leads to dehydration of the animal. Because of the diarrhea and the dehydration, we often see a loss of appetite, as well as weight loss, and those cat animals may be slow growers. Most likely to occur, so if you look at the type of animal that is most likely to get this, it's usually your younger animals, your young kids that have just been um, born. If you have conditions in your facilities that are overcrowded, uh, dirty pens, or any other stresses, this can also contribute to lowering the immune system, immune system of the animal and resulting in this type of infection. So treatment for coccidiosis, we can use a coccidiostat um, or coccidiocide. Um, both of these are available um, on the commercial market, and we can use those to try to um, treat the animal once we've confirmed that they do, in fact, um, have coccidiosis. But we can also, again, focus on prevention. So looking at the ration that we're feeding, oftentimes a producer will include menensin, which is a coccidiostat, um, into their rations to try to help prevent um, this particular parasite from infecting the animals. We can also utilize the reduction of the fecal to oral contact, so try to make sure that we have the animals in a very clean environment and reduce the amount of contact that they have um, with manure or other fecal material. Another major concern that we often have with our goats, um, both young and old, is caused by is a condition that's caused by numerous types of bacteria, which is pneumonia. Now, animals that come down with pneumonia, which involves the lungs and an infection within the lungs, often are showing signs of yellow nasal discharge. You'll hear coughing from these animals. This is often the first sign um, that you may have pneumonia uh, within your herd. Animals that are sick tend to have a fever, which is normally above the 101.5 degree Fahrenheit that we um, are like to see in a healthy, healthy animal, and they also have a very tired appearance. What can we do to try to prevent pneumonia from occurring? The biggest thing is to make sure our barns or the areas that we have these animals house is well ventilated. We also need to make sure that we take away any major temperature changes, which often contributes to bouts of pneumonia, and also any stress that the animal uh, may, may involve or may be around, because this can contribute to cases of pneumonia. So just like some of our other diseases, uh, we do need to have a treatment if our animals come down with pneumonia. So the number one therapy that's recommended is to use um, antibiotic therapy. Uh, there's multiple different kinds of uh, therapy that are out there on the commercial market in terms of antibiotics, um, and veterinarians will advise their clients on which is the best one um, to treat their herd with. But again, we stress that it's better to try to prevent the disease um, than you don't even have to treat the disease. So again, as I've already stated, you want to avoid any kind of stress on the animal, which could be overcrowded conditions, uh, lack of a proper diet, temperature swing, so if it's hot one day, very cold the next, or vice versa. We also want to make sure that that barn is incredibly ventilated because this is really going to contribute, um, if there is lack of ventilation, to increase cases of pneumonia. And finally, clean bedding. Uh, that's also important. That kind of goes hand in hand with ventilation because we want to reduce the stress and the exposure of those animals uh, to the bacteria. And the final condition we're going to talk about today in this lab station is ringworm. So how do you know if, an, if a goat has ringworm? So your biggest thing is to look for the symptoms of it, which are going to be hair loss in small circles, as you can see here on the picture, flaky, crusty lesions. So ringworm is highly, highly contagious. It is a fungal infection that animals and humans can get of the skin. So because of this, ringworm is considered a zoonotic condition. So if you ever encounter a goat or another animal that you think maybe has ringworm, you want to be be very careful because if you touch it or um, inadvertently touch it, um, it can spread to you as well and you are able to pass it on to other people. So if you see ringworm and you have a confirmed case of ringworm, your best treatment is going to be a topical antifungal treatment that you'll repeat um, based on the number of times uh, that that particular product um, tells you to do that. Again, how do we prevent this from occurring so we can prevent it? The best way is if you have an infected animal, we need to make sure that that animal is quarantined away from your other animals because if it's touching other um, either fences or it's in the barn or, or direct contact with an animal that has ringworm, it's 
it's probably going to infect your other animals uh, that have come in contact with it. We also want to make sure we maintain a clean environment. So if that fungus is within the environment, we're able to clean that off so animals become less exposed. We also need to make sure when we're transporting animals that we take care of that if we do have any that have ringworm to thoroughly clean which whatever vehicle uh, we're using as transportation to move them. Okay, so in summary, today we've talked about four main issues that are related to goat health. Metabolic issues, so we use the example of milk fever or hypocalcemia. Parasites, which we use the example of coccidiosis. Bacterial infections that are pathogens that can lead to pneumonia in our animals. And ringworm as being one particular uh, fungal infections that we see in times of environmental stress. So the number one thing you can do, or a group of things you can do to try to prevent these diseases from occurring, we know that health management is incredibly important. We need to vaccinate our animals, um, as described by the veterinarian who's attending to those that you're heard. We need to make sure that we're deworming the animals at proper stages of life and following the correct directions on the dewormer. We need to make sure those animals have a very balanced ration that's related back to their stage of their life. So if they've currently are pregnant or if they're young, we need to make sure we adjust the ration to accommodate that animal. Also basic management skills like managing clean environments and trying to prevent stress that our animals may encounter uh, throughout the day or during transport is going to be incredibly important. All these things, if not done correctly, can lead to a weakened immune system and make our animals more susceptible to the major problems that we talked about today in lab.